I don't know what it's going to look like. We'll find out when I see it yeah, on YouTube. Be like, who's that d from Michigan? <laughs> 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 look at him. Something wrong with him. He's like that <laughs> so It's just something wrong with him. <laughs> Gonna be all right. Oh, is it yeah. Are we hot? Yeah, we're good. Oh boy. What's going on, guys? Doing another video live from the uh, trophy room of <laughs> this uh, Michigan hunter that kills some studs in what he says the state that doesn't have any big deer. <laughs> I may uh, have to rethink that after talking to you guys about your North Carolina deer. <laughs> yeah, we're sitting here at the beginning of the, we're doing another video just here a minute ago. We've been, we've been hunt, turkey hunting with him the last couple of days and he's like, yeah, there's no big deer. We, we have very little big deer in Michigan. Uh, and then we start talking about the deer that we have in North Carolina and he's like, oh, maybe it's not so bad. <laughs> maybe I don't want to come to North Carolina and hunt. No, anyway, so this is something that I've been meaning to do. We've been wanting to do this for the last couple of years. Uh, Kevin actually shot a really big deer. It's actually this deer behind us. Um, uh, what, what year did you shoot him? Eight, I 19? No, I think it was 20. 20? Yep. So he shot this deer. Now it would be going on four years ago. And he actually had some footage of like kind of a little bit of footage of the hunt and actually yep. shooting the deer and, and stuff like that. Deer was what'd you say 150 some inches yeah i think 154 right? 154 inch deer in michigan which for the guys that hunt michigan probably already know that's a big deer like that's a really that's a big deer in most states but that's a really big deer in michigan so i thought it was worse since we're up here taking the time to let kevin kind of tell y'all kind of what led to killing this deer uh kind of from start to finish and maybe y'all can learn something from it and maybe you'll enjoy this and uh we'll do something like this in the future, maybe kind of go over some of our deer here and there from, from years past and kind of go through the situation and, and talk about it. So without further ado, here is oh, Kevin. Oh boy, put me on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, 2020, COVID year. That's the only good thing that came out of COVID, but <laughs> <laughs> had time to scout and stuff. But uh, it, it, Nothing good came out of COVID, yes. especially on public land, because now a lot of deer got killed that year. Yeah, the hunt public land's gotten out of control. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I stick to private in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, deer season for me always just starts in the summer once they start getting you know a recognizable rack or something that you can kind of keep tabs on deer. Um, this deer started showing up on camera and out in fields, and it was obviously something that caught my eye. Quite a bit larger than normal. Um, normally you're hunting, you know, I'm trying to hunt like 125 inch deer. Well, this one, like I said, was 150. Uh, and unfortunately a lot of other people noticed it too, because th this same year, um, people were knocking on doors to try to get on this one. He was real visible in the fields, which made me a little nervous, but I, it was on my parents' piece, which I knew I had that locked down. And I knew most of the neighbors around me, they weren't gonna lay by on. So I felt pretty confident if he would stay on my parents that maybe we could kill him. But as the summer goes on, I keep getting pictures of him and he's out in the fields. Um, my parents can see a lot of our 
we have a small fields around the outside of our property on the edge of the woods and they would see him occasionally. So I knew he was using the property, which was really exciting and hard to control <laughs> my excitement for that. In the, where my parents were seeing him around the north end of the property all the time. So I already felt like I had a pretty good shot. He's using the north end, which is where all the fields are, where he would like to eat. If he was eating in the other field that's on the neighbors, that's just a little further north. Um, that neighbor doesn't really hunt too hard, a little bit during gun season, so I felt real confident I was going to go after him right away. Well, let me, let me, for the people that don't know how this lays out, now he's saying his parents' property, we're talking 60 acres. Yeah, and like 30 acres of woods. 30 acres of woods. Yeah. We're not talking 600 acres. Yeah, we're not. Said that, yeah. You got 15, 20 different neighbors inside of where this deer could travel. Yeah. Like all these little sections, and we saw it. We didn't know this. We saw it. Hunter and I saw it when we've been turkey hunting, but a lot of these little areas are, you know, a field, one field that might have one acre or half an acre of woods yeah. on it. And it's all split that way. It's not big tracts of land. So like each 20 or 30 acres might have a hunter or two hunting that 20 or 30 acres. Yeah. So this deer, even though he's on Kevin's parents, 60 acres, 30 acres of woods, he could travel five or 10 other properties probably at yeah. least. They actually had pictures of this deer on the next um, mile over where right across from miles we were turkey hunting. Really? They had pictures of him over there too, earlier. He, luckily he moved over to ours, getting closer to season. But um, yeah, where was I here? He was using the north end of the property. And I've, it's my parents' property. I've been hunting it since I was a kid, so I know it very well. So I threw a bunch of just regular SD cameras on the on the very south end, and in a few in the middle, but I didn't want to go very far back in the woods. So I ran a bunch down there just to make sure he wasn't down there and just see what other deer are around. And I went elk hunting. When I got back, I went and checked my cameras. I believe it was just like a day or two before season. I ran in and checked the cameras. You didn't get into a lot of my parents' woods this, this year, turkey hunting, but there's a lot of two tracks, kind of like the one we walked. There's several of them through the rest of the woods. So I had some cameras on those and my dad walks through the woods some, so I didn't stray off of that, but I went in there and grabbed them cameras that were on them two tracks. And I found out that he's using the south end of the property, which is pretty exciting because now he's traveling from the south end of my property through the middle of it to get to the north end of my property. So he's using the whole length of the property that I can hunt. So I'm feeling really confident now that I got a pretty good handle on the general direction of where he's bedding and then where he's feeding. So I'm feeling real good about it, but come to find out I started hunting him and he wasn't there. And the more I think about it and the more I checked other cameras later in the year, what I did when I went in there to check those cameras right before season started, I had bumped him. He was bedding kind of like you hear people talk. He was bedding watching the access where mm. like my dad will walk. So that, that'll be key when I kill him. But I bumped him just from grabbing those cameras and he moved to the north end. And I know that because my parents seen him come out there one night and he was coming out way on the north end, different than what he was. So I hunted him hard for three days. The first day I hunted him there and it was a no show. And then I hunted still close to the fields because I didn't want to bump him because I didn't know exactly where he was cutting through. I hunted him in the middle of the property, but at the field edges, kind of. And he wasn't coming through there. And I grabbed some cameras. I'm like, what happened to this deer? So I grabbed a few more cameras after that hunt. And I realized that he had switched his pattern. He was coming up to the north more. That's when I realized it. So I stayed hunting the middle. The third morning, I hunted the middle. And my parents had seen him in the field go in on an angle, like just past me, like just outside of bow range. I couldn't see, it was too thick, but about 80 yards out he had crossed, heading towards his original bedding location. So hmm. that evening, I planned on killing him where I had originally planned on killing him off all the trail cam pictures I had to have him. Um, but I didn't access, obviously, the way I did before. I chose to access through, it was a really thick, patch of woods we had a little old food plot in there but the, there's no way he could see it from where he was bedding where i i had a pretty good gauge on where he was bedding judging by what cameras i checked and where he seen me from 
So I went through some thick stuff, through that food plot that he couldn't see me, and then through a lot more thick stuff. And I circled around on like a path where he would be coming from bedding to the food on the north end. And I circled around and set up um, a mobile stand also. Like I said, this property I've been hunting for a lot of years. I probably, I think I have 19 permanent sets here. Hey. But I still killed this deer mobile. I don't know if he was going by any of my permanent mm. sets. I usually use them. I keep those for the kids and the wife. They're not going to hang a mobile setup or a saddle every time they go hunting. They're just not going to do it. Um, so I set up mobily on a tree that that deer has never seen a stand in before. And I seen, um, it was a pretty good night. I think I had eight or nine does come past me. And then it was getting that low light, but it, it was still 45 minute, minutes of legal. I seen legs with my binoculars probably 120 yards out. And I just had that gut feeling that it was him, but I couldn't see his upper half for another few minutes. And then when he stepped out, it was, a, he, everybody loves like a no brainer, no thinker. It's big enough. You don't even have to look at it again. You don't have to think about it. It was that. I'm like, dude, there he is. And he, awesome, worked all the way to me no clue i was there which is another awesome part about bow hunting when you're hunting deer and they don't have a clue you're there that makes it even better he's just picking a few acorns weaving his way through there he didn't see anybody come in on that access he didn't think anything of it he come by me so calm and i did get it all on footage but i think it was about 20 yards i had to stop him i was already at full draw stopped him and then as soon as he stopped i shot and i knew i hit him really good you could hear it in the video you hit him good yeah yeah i hit him real good i don't think my light knock went off i can't remember but i know i hit him good and another reason i know is because it was only like a small loop and i heard him crash like in just a couple of seconds and he was down no more noises uh, i was so jacked up you kidding me just shot a freaking giant dude michigan october 3rd called it perfect shot smoked him heard him drop Time and effort in hunting, it is my hobby, it's what I do. That is a freaking giant. Get a little selfie in here, there he is. All right, boys, quick track job. Oh, maybe 70 yards from where I shot him. So. What a magnum, man. It was my biggest Michigan buck and my second biggest buck ever, and it was on my parents' home farm, which was awesome. In Michigan, if you can just have a deer like that, anywhere that you can even hunt, you feel like you hit the lottery to begin with, whether you even see it or get it or not. So it just was one of those years that was just special. It just all came together. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to put this video together is because like a buck like that in a state like this, especially on a small little you know, home place, yeah. like a small track of land, that is probably equivalent to killing like a 200 inch deer in Iowa like that's just one of those deer that's just yeah. it's a special deer that you might go forever and not kill another deer that you might go you know this year you might kill a bigger deer than that but yeah, and I don't hold my the, likely, machine, but the yeah. likelihood is just not there like no he's killed a lot of good deer and Kevin knows how to hunt like just from seeing how he hunts in the areas that I've met he, like we actually met hunting public land in Ohio and uh, you can tell when you run into somebody that they know what they're doing. Like to be able to put that together, like I, you bump, you realizing that you bumped him and turning that into, all right, I need to access this differently and kill that deer. Yeah. That's big. Like that's a lot of people, like that's why I want to do a video like this. Like a lot of people don't realize how critical your access is. Yeah. Maybe not where, like if you screw it up on your access or your exit, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're in the, on the X when you're hunting. If you screw up your entry and your exit, that deer, especially a big deer like that, that's being hunted, like once big deer know they're being hunted, they act completely different. Yeah. And especially coming from a pressured state, like North Carolina gets a whole lot of pressure too. Like when you're in a pressured state and that deer feels any amount of pressure, they change, they yeah. change their pattern. Luckily for you, he changed his pattern and stayed on your parents' property. Yeah, I got but, lucky. Yeah, the where I'm gonna have the video in here. Like we're gonna tie this in together with his actual footage of this kill. So uh, 
I wanted to kind of bring y'all the whole story. Like you can watch a hunting film or hunting video, and a lot of times, like we'll try to put videos together and stuff, but you don't get the big picture sometimes. And like when you hear Kevin talking about the north and the south end of the property, like to me that sounds like I got 200 acres and he's on the north end and the south end. Yeah. You hear like Lee Lukowski and those guys talking about thousands of acres that they hunt. This is little small tracts of land out here that you got five or six different neighbors right around you hunting. You gotta be very careful on these deer because the second that you pressure him, he's gone. Yeah. And you know, for you to figure it out on one screw up and turn that into killing him, what, three days later or two days yeah, later? Yeah, killed him on October 3rd and it started the 1st. So. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, normally I wouldn't be that aggressive on like one piece of property, but like one of my buddy's wives ran into one of my neighbors and he was showing him pictures of this deer he was going to hunt this year and it was that deer yeah and she's like oh this deer he's already dead <laughs> so I, in michigan i know the neighbors are hunting them i mean the guys that had pictures of them across the road were hunting hard for yeah. him you know normally i wouldn't go in so aggressive but he i've learned from um, i'm 40 i'm older than you i've been hunting a long time you have missed opportunities on deer like that you don't get them back so yeah. you know i'm not afraid if i see a deer like that i gotta get out of my tree stand and go after it. i'm going to because i'll probably never see it again yeah so this deer's on my dad's now i'm gonna i'm gonna hunt aggressive but smart and try to kill him as quick as i can before other neighbors or he just moves off or changes his pattern completely so yeah yeah that's one thing that we've no i've noticed in north carolina as well like your chances of killing a big deer are the best your first time in the woods Yep. and they're the best before that deer realizes anybody's hunting them so like our season comes in quite a bit earlier it comes in like the second week of september mm -hmm. so those first two or three days of the season bucks are still on food they're still on the food to bed pattern like they're wow oh, <laughs> holy cow <laughs> Whoa, oh man, Hunter's over here shaking the house. Uh, Hunter, Hunter, you're cracking me up, dude. I think he's telling us we're talking too long. I think that was time to go, Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, if you got any questions, if you got anything for Kevin, comment down below and uh, we'll get your questions answered. If you want to see more content like this, comment down below and let us know. Uh, we're glad to come up here and hunt with uh, Kevin this last couple days. Man, we got after some turkeys, y'all. I mean, we got after some turkeys. Um, but I wanted to bring y'all this. Uh, I'm glad Kevin kind of. Kevin's got a lot of insight on on hunting, and when you get around guys like that, it's always good to kind of chit chat back and forth and kind of rack your brain around the success that each everybody's had and kind of like celebrate in the success that each everybody's had. Like if somebody would have killed this deer. Kevin's not gonna be mad at him for killing this deer. No, like he's I'm hunting the deer the same way. Like yep. everybody's doing the same thing. It's just it's nice when that ends up being you that's successful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you can't dwell on it your whole life. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anyways, guys, appreciate you watching. Remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. And we'll catch you on the next video. See, that was good. Yeah. That was real good. The best part about it was that giant fart you. <laughs>